while amphibious assaults have been around since the earliest military actions, after all coastlines are broad, thinly defended points of entry for enemies, it was during World War II that the tactics of the modern amphibious assault were developed and tested. In its most basic form, amphibious assaults are simply actions that get troops from ships to an enemy, sh to an enemy shoreline. Now, while the landing isn't much of a problem, the challenge occurs with the coordination of participating naval, air, and ground forces. Failures in communication between the three commands, particularly during the operation, can leave forces vulnerable. In addition to the coordination of commands, things like ammunition, supplies, construction, and evacuation of the wounded need to be carefully coordinated. It's failure to plan that usually delays the troop getting to shore, and fighting against the clock often leads to mistakes being made. Two ways to mitigate this are to always let the nature of the land action drive the planning. In other words, figuring out what's going to occur on land and what resources are needed to support that action before planning how to get ashore. The other way is to rely on small unit leadership at the landing craft level, with higher level command taking control only after units are on shore and beginning to organize. Now, during World War II, the Battle of Guadalcanal was the first major test of the United States amphibious landing doctrine. However, it wouldn't be until 1943 that the U.S. took the offensive that amphibious operations in the Pacific should be widely used. The nucleus of the landing force was usually the Marine Division, which was often reinforced by Corps troops and sometimes Army units. The Navy provided air cover and naval gunfire from cruisers and destroyers, and the landing craft were under the command of a naval officer entitled the Beachmaster, who was responsible for getting the craft ashore, unloading materials, and the evacuation of casualties. The landing force itself was under a shore party commander who handled the men and supplies once the craft landed, and obviously coordination between these two leaders was essential. Now, once the beachhead was established, combat engineers had to be brought ashore to clear obstacles, and at the same time, light tanks and artillery had to be offloaded. Now, initially, the landing craft, vehicle, and personnel, or LCVP, or Higgins boat, was crucial to the World War II amphibious operations. They had the advantage that men could be unloaded from the bow rather than from the sides, which was, Im which was important to rapid deployment. Now, after the deployment of troops and materials, the boat could be retracted back out to sea easily. However, the major problem with the Higgins in the Pacific was that the shallow hull could be easily damaged by reefs, and thus the amphibious tractors began to be more widely used. Now, to get large number of troops, equipment, and supplies ashore, the gigantic LSTs became more common, and because of their adaptability, they were also used as hospital ships, bases for engineers, repair shops, and even many aircraft carriers. So Hit the Beach came out in 1965, and it was published by Milton Bradley. And it's real similar to two older games, Malefiz and Barricade, which are German games. Uh, it kind of has a little bit of a backgammon feel to it, even though it has little soldiers and everything like that. The rules are pretty simple. You can play with two to four players. It works a little better with more players. And you use your combined forces to compete with each other to try to be the first to reach the final objective, which is the Japanese headquarters on the large island. And when a player defeats a Japanese unit, they replace it in another location, possibly to provide obstacles to the progress of your opponent. On the board, there are spaces on the land areas that are brown circles, and over the water, the spaces are white dots. And the spaces are connected with black lines, which are your paths or invasion routes for the movement. The large red circle in the center of the large island is the Japanese headquarters, which is your final objective. And the colored beach areas outlined on the board locate the place where landings are to be made to enter the island and you have to land on the beaches that your color is assigned to. There are 14 yellow Japanese defenders, which are placed on each yellow-centered brown circle, and there should be a, one at each beach landing space and six in the marked space in the center of the island. To start the game, players throw a dice, and the highest player starts first, and turns are taken clockwise to the left of the starting player. Now again, the object of the game is to be the first player to occupy the final objective with one of their units. And players throw the dice and move any one of their pieces the number of spaces is shown on the dice. Now the division pieces, which are marine and army, move from space to space over sea and over land. The support pieces, which are the ship and the airplane, are used only for beach landing support and do not move along the paths nor occupy spaces. In fact, the support pieces can only be moved with a throw of six on the dice. So when a six is thrown, the player can choose to move any of their divisions, six spaces, or they can move one support piece, the ship or plane. And to move the support piece, it's immediately placed in the beach area of its own color, but not on the white dot. 
and the support pieces may be moved from the start circle to a beach area or from one beach area to another. Each player is responsible for two beach landings. Now a division piece can be moved in any direction along any path, but it may not be moved back and forth in two directions in the same turn. And a division piece can move over any other piece, whether it's their own or their opponents. Only one piece, however, can occupy a space at the same time. Now players have to take the full move as thrown on the dice, and if they don't wish to, they can pass and not take the move, either by choice or because there's a space that's not open for them. If an opponent's division piece is on a brown circle, that is a land area, and a player's move will allow his piece to land on the same space by exact count, the opponent's piece is relieved and he's sent back to the start circle. Now when I do the play in a little bit, I'm going to mess this up because I keep landing on the pieces that are on white circles for the opponent and sending them back. And this is wrong, so just note that when you play this. Now a division cannot jump over or move past a Japanese defender piece. These obstacles have to be removed according to uh, the combat rules. So in order to make a beach landing and remove the Japanese defender piece, you have to attack the beach that's the same color as your units. For example, red are used on the red beach and blue are used on the blue beach. Before the beach defender can be removed, both support pieces of that color have to be in their little areas. And only a marine division piece of that color can remove the defender in the beach area. To do this, the player has to move a marine division onto the defender's space by exact count. An army unit won't do it. The player removing the defender can then place that piece on any empty brown circle on the board, except on another beach area square. And once a beach has been cleared of its defender obstacle, the brown circle must be kept free of any defender piece throughout the game. So other brown spaces, even ones just next to the beach area, can be used for placing defenders. I messed this up in the game. I think there's a couple times that I place the defenders on beach circles. After a beach has been cleared, any piece can move onto or through that space, even the opponent's piece of another color. And the support pieces are no longer required once the defender has been removed from the beach. Now to remove defenders that are not at a beach, the player moving his division piece, either a army or a marine, onto a defender obstacle by exact count removes the defender and occupies that space. And they, they can then place the defender on any unoccupied brown circle space on the board, except for beach landing spaces. And you'll note that an army unit can also do this on any land area except for the beaches. The defender may be placed in the same island, on the large island, or on an atoll space. Now the defender can also be placed around opponents to provide further obstacles to their progress or be placed behind a player's own division to block an opponent from attacking them. Now remember that divisions can move forwards and backwards so they can move backwards if desired to remove a defender or to relieve an opponent's piece. Now at the end of the game the player must move on to the red final objective by exact count and the first player to occupy the main objective space is the winner. A couple notes on strategy. After clearing your first beach, it's usually best to get as many divisions through the small island as possible. And after a player's cleared both of his beaches, then the support pieces are no longer needed. It's often wise to split your forces, sending one or more divisions along the same route as an opponent. In this way, you may wait for him to clear the beach, then follow him onto the large island, and then get rid of his divisions. Remember, an opponent can be gotten rid of only on a land area, not over the sea. So do as I say and don't do as I do in the playthrough. Now stack your divisions in front of a defender so that any one of several throws on the die will allow removal of that obstacle. And remember that other than the beach landing, Marines and Army divisions have the same power. Also, placing obstacles in between your pieces and an opponent are good protection, especially near the end of the game. Okay, let's give it a shot. Setup for this game is pretty easy. You have your little places down where it says start here. And the Japanese are put where the little uh, stars are on the land uh, circles. And again, you can... Uh, knock back your opponent's pieces, but you got to remember you got to do them where there's the land uh, circles. So they can't knock back a piece on the little uh, ocean or white circles. Let's go ahead and start. the. Uh, we're going to keep running pretty quick on this one. Uh, okay, so the red rolls a one to see who goes first, and blue rolls a two. So blue gets to go first. They roll and get a two. And we will take, we'll start our marines. We'll move them into place first. Uh, red goes. These guys get kind of stuck together here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Move them. Okay. Blue goes with five. Red goes with one. 
Blue goes with five. We'll move our Marine into place. One, two, three, four, five. Blue or red goes with two. We'll move an army guy. One, two, three, or one, two, one, two. You can see the army stand a little taller than the Marines. Let's uh, pop on in. You can kind of see the difference here. I guess we can just go right there. Okay, blue goes. They have one. Red goes with five. One, two, three, four. Can't do that guy. One, two, three, four, five. Two. And four. Oh, my. One, two, three, four. Okay, he can move. Okay, blue goes with four. Everybody's getting pretty bunched up. We need some sixes. Oh, there's a six. Okay, so red's going to move a airplane into place to cover that beach landing. Blue gets an air. They'll move a plane into place. Red gets a five. Blue gets a three. Can't move anything past. Red gets a three. Can't move anything past. Blue gets a five. Can't move anything. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then red gets a ship. So now red can, uh, can assault the Japanese on the beach. Blue gets a six. Uh, same for them. And a one. This is the only move I can make there. A three. One, two, three. Hey, he can move here. So he moves the Japanese back, and we'll set him up here to try to impede the try to impede red a little bit. Okay, red gets a three. They do the same thing. Okay, um, and we will do the. We're going to put that here. Okay, blue gets a six. Um, we'll use that to move him here. Actually, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and move him as far as I can. He gets a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to move this guy because if I stay here, I'm going to get knocked back. Okay, blue gets a two. Um, red gets a five. Two, three, four, five. Move through that zone. That's a dangerous area. Uh, blue gets a three. I'm going to try to make it. Uh, red gets a four. I can go one, two, three, four. I can move backwards and knock him back, and we'll do that. Okay, blue gets a three. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, we'll go this way. Okay. Red gets a two. Blue gets a one. He'll knock him back. Red gets a two, and he'll knock him back. Blue gets a six. Move him forward. Red gets a five. Move him here. Blue gets a six. Move him forward. Red gets a three. Blue gets a three. Red gets a four. Blue gets a five. Okay, we'll knock him back. Uh, red gets a four. Blue gets a four. Okay, red gets a five. Blue gets a five. 
Red gets a six. Blue gets a five. Red gets a five. One, two, three. Blue, <clears throat> four. Red gets a five. Blue gets a two. Red gets a one. Oops, red gets a one. Where are you at, red? Um, and I'm needing a six and a three. He needs a four. Blue gets a one. Red gets a four. Blue gets a four. There we go. We'll put him here. And there. Okay. Red gets a three. Ah, if I needed. Okay. Blue gets a four. Red gets a three. Um, blue gets a two. Red gets a two. Blue gets a four. Red gets a one. Blue gets a four. Red gets a three. Knocks him out. And we can move up here, right here. We're going to move there. Trapping him. And blue gets a one. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this guy here. No, I'll put him. Can't put him there because there's a guy there. So put him there. Red gets a three. Nothing. One, two, three. Red needs a six. Blue gets a two. Move back and take him out. Red gets a three. Gosh, red could use these rolls. Blue gets a four. There we go. One, two, three, four. We're going to start to threaten this guy. Blue gets a two. Now, oh, he's a marine, so he could do that. Well, I'm going to say he can do that because this is not a beach. This isn't. This is a not a friendly beach, so we'll say he can do that. Okay, five. Okay. Blue gets a six. One, two, three. Oh, he can't do anything there. And red gets a four. Blue gets a five. Red gets a five. Blue gets a one. Red gets a four. Blue gets a four. Uh, red gets a five. We need a six, red. Blue gets a four. Uh, red gets a six. There we go, finally. Okay, so red's got... One, two, he needs a three there. Blue gets a one. Red gets a four. Blue gets a five. 
knocking him here. And blue's going to win this one, I think. Red gets a one. Can't use him. If he was a Marine, we could. But the Marines here needs a three. Okay. Blue gets a five. One, two, three. Or one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll go here. Red gets our three. There's their three, finally. Okay, we're going to put that there. Uh... Blue gets a five. Blue's got a five. Where's blue at? Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Red, five. Okay. Blue gets a three. One, two. Okay, I can go up here and then take this guy out. And I just need a roll of one. Um, put him here. Okay, red gets a one. We are going to make our way inwards. We need these. So, blue gets a five. Can't do anything there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Blue gets a six. Well, we could have used that earlier. I can't use it. I have to pass. Okay. Blue gets a three. Okay, red gets a four. I can go one, two, three, four. I can move him out. And we are going to him him even, in, in even more. Okay, blue gets a four. I mean, blue just needs a, a one. A four, let's see. Blue has a four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Hey, well, he can be knocked back from there. So one, two, three, four. Red gets a six. Um, okay. Blue gets a two. Red gets a four. One, two, three, four. I don't, this actually, as a simulation, it kind of works in a weird sort of way. I, you get the feeling you really are against uh, an endless series of machine gun nests that are nestled on the mountains of an island. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, two. Okay, then a two for the red. Um, blue gets a four. And we will send this guy packing all the way home. Of course, forces of the same size aren't going to forces of the same side aren't going to be facing off against each other. But three for red. One, two, three. Oh, I can do that. Three. Goodbye. Okay, blue. Gets a five. Red gets a five. I love the art too. Yeah, this reminds me of my childhood a lot. This design um, coming out in the late 50s, early 60s. Okay, blues with their five. Red has a five. Blue with a one. There we go. Finally. So finally, blue takes the headquarters there. And that's the game. Um, like I say, it's pretty simple. 
but I think it has a little bit of nuance. It kind of plays like backgammon a little bit. I thought there's kind of that sort of feel to it. It's, it's much more nuanced than a lot of the popular games at the time were. So it's in that way, it's kind of cool. I think if I was eight years old, me and the people that I hung around with my other eight year old friends would have thought this was the coolest game ever. Let's see when I was eight, it was 1973. So yeah, world war two was still fairly fresh in our minds. I mean, when we played Army Men, it was definitely World War II based. And of course, war movies were still shown on TV a lot. Uh, a lot of the older folks that we knew were veterans of the war. My uncle Lloyd fought uh, in the Pacific Theater. And I remember him talking about the war some when I was growing up. But anyway, that's what I got this week. It's pretty simple. I wanted to run through a kind of simple game just to kind of get some games under my, under my belt and some videos under my belt. So that I have time to spend a little time working on some longer games. I think I tend to hit the shorter, easier games a little more just because I can get a video out once a week with them. So, hey, I thank you guys. If you stayed with me this far, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next week. Talk to you later. Bye.